Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, at this point, I'd like everyone to please uh, take a moment to turn off your cell phones. And let's thank Kaiser, our sponsors, Kaiser University, Mosaic, and of course, the Bradenton Country Club for hosting us today. So I would like everyone to please stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know where the flag is. John, you don't have your flag shirt on today, huh? No. <laughs> well, we'll say the pledge anyway. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'd like to uh, recognize our elected officials. Today with us, we have Manatee County Commissioner Betsy Banak, um, <clears throat> Manatee County uh, Commissioner John Chappie. We have Manatee County Commissioner Robin DeSabatino, Manatee County Commissioner Carol Whitmore, Manatee County School Board Julie Aranabar. Thank you all for joining us today. And as always, we'd like to give a special thanks to METV for filming this. Charles is always there for us. So the Office of the Secretary, the head of the Department of the Business and Professional Regulation is the Secretary, who is appointed by the Governor and is subject to confirmation by the Senate. <clears throat> there is no set term limit. The Secretary serves at the pleasure of the Governor. Secretary is responsible for planning, directing, coordinating, and executing the powers, duties, and functions vested in the department, its divisions, bureaus, and other subunits. So today, of course, we have uh, Ken Lawson, who is our secretary at this time. Joining us, um, Ken is a native Floridian. <clears throat> he spent more than 12 years serving and protecting the public in numerous regulatory positions. He began his legal career in the United States Marine Corps then spent seven years serving as Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Middle District in Florida. He was then appointed the Assistant Secretary of Enforcement for the U.S. Department of the Treasury. And in 2003, uh, Ken returned to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Middle District of Florida. He was then appointed the Assistant Chief Counsel for Field Operations with the Department of Homeland Security's Transportation Security Administration. So he has a long history. Um, Ken is a graduate of the of Florida State University and the Florida State University College of Law. So, <laughs> there we go. So let's uh, let's welcome Ken. Let me and let me just tell you um, real quickly that uh, we are going to open it up for questions um, a little bit at the end. And when when we take questions, please step to the microphone. The microphone is not hooked up to the PA, but it's there. Um, for METV, so when we film this, we'll be able to hear the questions. So let's welcome Ken Lawson. Hey, good afternoon. How are y'all doing? You know, Tom, thank you for reading my resume there, but I'm ashamed of it because it says to the world that I cannot keep a job. I just bounce around. It does, it does. But the most important thing is that, you know, I was born and raised in Gainesville, therefore I am a Gainesville Seminole. <laughs> but my, I am, I am. And, but my adult home is Tampa. All right, I live on the other side of the Gandy Bridge, and I was a federal prosecutor in Tampa. And while I was a federal prosecutor, I would come down to this area. Um, there was a Manatee Weed and Seed Task Force, and I worked with law enforcement here in the area, working on you know, out of drug dealers and so. Because this community, this community, Sarasota, it's important. And ten years ago, you know, we were really engaged in ensuring that it was cleaned and that folks weren't victimizing our people here. And as a federal prosecutor, my values were, what can we do to ensure that people who just want to follow the law feel like they're safe in their own homes and not be hurt by criminals with my driving mantra? And the thing is, I developed that mantra from meeting a guy like Kevin Hennessy right here. 
Because it segues into a real important story. When I went to Florida State in undergrad, I worked at Capital Nautilus. It was a health club, and I was a fitness instructor there. I was a lost and wayward young man. And Kevin, I was, I was. And Kevin was a, was a young man who just started at the Messer Vickers Law Firm in Tallahassee. And we had a little fitness line. As he came down the line, I would just bug Kevin, just talking about law school, how to build a life, how to set goals. And Kevin, being a, a UM grad, very sensitive and caring. He's not, not, all right. He'd just say, look, you know, get a grip, have a plan. And he helped me have a plan. So Kevin, I, I haven't had a chance to say this in my life, but I want to say to you, to your face, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for making time for me as a human being. I really appreciate you. And what Kevin did for me, well, thank you. What Kevin did for me is like, what I try to do as a federal prosecutor, what we try to do in Tallahassee, is that we try to take care of one another. Because in this state, although we're a large state, we're really one community. You know, we're a community of people who are trying to do the right thing every single day with our families, whether it's through education, trying to you know, get our kids through school, <coughs> or have a job and report that job every day so we can you know, make some money and promote ourselves, our families throughout you know, society. But there's one word that really guides us as Floridians at this time, this place, and that word is business. Because regardless of anything, if we don't have jobs that are viable, that are strong, if we don't have a system that supports us with fulfilling our dreams and creating a business or going to a job knowing it's gonna pay us each day, we have nothing because at the end, if it disappears, our system is eroded. And for a community like Manatee, y'all are connected. I'm from Gainesville, a small town. Manatee County with 300,000 people consists of folks who do business with one another. All right, your friends, your neighbors. It's about trust, isn't it, Tom? It is. Yeah, it's about your word. It's about doing, being, showing up every single day. It's not about flash and having that great big thing that's now and, and hip and hot. It's about being consistent. It's about a legacy, isn't it, Judge? It really is. It goes back, not just my time, but my daddy's time, my granddad's time, my mama, my grandmother, all of us. And then also we build out towards the future. That's what's here in Manatee County, a legacy. But it stands on having viable businesses that I know you're proud of, providing services and products that can be relied upon and counted on. And that's what brings a community together that you can believe in it, like having a strong community bank. You know what I mean? Yeah. But as a state, as I said, we're one state, and this word business drives us as a state. And I've been lucky as a secretary to travel the state from Pensacola down to Miami and talk to business leaders and understand their tensions and see they're motivated. Because for Floridians, there's one thing that drives us in our hearts that we're entrepreneurs, that we are willing to stand on our hind legs and make things happen, not just wait to be handed a job, right? But when conditions are bad, it hurts us and it slows down those dreams to keep us from making those things a reality. And I tell you what, a couple of years ago, things were really bad in the state of Florida. You know, um, with the economic crisis that hit our country, it hit us worse because we were ground zero. I'm gonna give you some numbers because I know, I know y'all are, are like governor because governor says this, if you can't measure it, it doesn't count. And if you're in business, touchy feely is nice, but if you can't put it down that ledger, and know what it says, it doesn't matter. But in this state, from 2007 to 2010, do you know how many jobs we lost? We lost nearly 800,000 private sector jobs during that time period. We had unemployment go from 3.5% to 11.1%, where 700,000 people start receiving unemployment benefits foreclosures hit a peak of 64,000 in 2009. That's horrible. That is just awful. But over the last two years, we're coming up. We've gotten off the floor. We're standing up again, and things are looking pretty bright. You know, Floridians are getting back to work, and I'm going to tell you this. Over the last two years, more than 300,000 private sector jobs have been created in this state alone. Now, I want you to put, I'll put this in context for you. Here in Manatee County, you know how many citizens there are in Manatee County? About 300,000. So there's been a new private sector job created for almost every single person in this county across the state. 
and a quarter of a million job openings in Florida are recorded as this past April. You know, that's huge. And that shows that we're moving forward, getting beyond that time of pain and sorrow. And not only am I just telling you this, because, you know, I see it in Tallahassee, but outside of Florida, folks are noticing. You know, CEO Magazine ranked Florida as number two, as the second best state for business in this country. And Fast Company Magazine said that Florida is the number one state for innovation. That is fantastic. But it's going to get better. It's going to get better and go beyond those numbers. Now, you may not know this about my department, but my department touches almost everybody in Manatee County. We got 17,000 licensees here. Where we got in this county folks who are realtors, construction contractors, and cosmetologists. In our department that I've run for the last two and a half years, I have nearly a million licensees, businesses and professionals, all right? And on having that responsibility, I got to make sure what we do makes sense, that policies we set and economic factors that exist are translated into actions that help our people continue this upward trend in our economy. You know, even when things are good, if you got people who set bad policy in Tallahassee, it can hurt you. You know, I told you I've traveled this state and I've talked to our people. And the thing about businesses in the state of Florida that surprised you, it may surprise you rather, is that folks want to be regulated, but they want rules that make sense, that don't waste money or time, that don't take away from your bottom line, but protect people. Protect the investment in your education, all right, in your training. But let you know, if I do this, I have a chance of being successful, as opposed to some crazy rule that comes out of the blue that takes away from my time and my resources. Now, in setting smart policies for my department and making sure we're doing the right things, and, and, and I, I can't, I'm the secretary, that means I'm in charge of these people. But the thing is, my boss is people of Florida and also Governor Scott. And Governor Scott, over the last you know, years, few years he's been in office, has tasked all the agency heads, people like me, with doing two things. Find ways to make it easier for Floridians to get back to work and to get rid of unnecessary regulations. And it's not just these two things. He just says, do these two things, but he's dead serious. You know, the governor does this with the secretaries. Every month in the Capitol, he meets with us. There, on the first floor of the Capitol, there's a large conference room. Then he brings in the secretaries and he sets the agenda and talks to us. But we had this one special meeting. It was a January of 2012, right after Christmas. He was sitting at the head of the table. Secretaries come in. And when you come in, you don't want to sit next to the governor, you know. But, you know, but I was late, okay? I was, okay? So I had to sit right next to the man, right? So he's sitting there and he was kind of ornery. And he was, he was. He's a, he's a really nice guy, but he's, he was kind of ornery that day. He said, look at here. I don't know about you. But I just came home from, I came back from Christmas break. I want to tell you, I didn't take this job for a paycheck. I didn't take this job for a title, but I took this job to do something. And you folks are my agents. And my goal is this, to help the state of Florida get better. And in my view, people want two things, a good education, a good job, all right? And as governor, well, I'm here four years or eight years. This is my agenda to help our folks. And you people better get on board. If you're not on board, you see that door right there? Go through it. But if you're on board every day, realize that you have a trust that's been given to you to help our people in the state of Florida. And I'm sitting there, you know, right? And he's looking at me. I'm like, oh my goodness, man, I'm not doing my job. But, but the point is this he motivated me to think about what can I do as an agency head to make sure I take care of our licensees uh, under my purview and also take care of my 1,600 employees who look up to me, look for me to give them direction. And in doing this job and making sure that we have policies that make sense, you know, I looked at our history and found that in our history, we failed the state of Florida. Back in 2008, my department, if you want to start a business, get a professional license, all right, and before you hang up your open for business sign, hang up your shingle and start making some money, you had to wait nearly a month and a half to get a license from my department. 41 days. That's unacceptable. You know, you, know you, you invest in education, as I said before, time, money, your dreams, you're feeding your family, you've got employees, and you're waiting for the state of Florida to get out of your way. In 2008, we slowed things down, but in 2013, we sped things up. 
Because what we've done is looked at ourselves, said, what are we doing wrong? How can we be better? And we found that by using technology, looking at our processes, that we could be more friendly to the business community and still protect our citizens. So now, if you want a professional license from my department, the average time you have to wait before you can open your door and start making money is between two and three days. That's what government should do, not get in the way, but help you make your way. Are you with me? Yes, All right now. Now I'll tell you this. Another thing, another thing we found is this, because when you apply for a license, you, know, you can apply online now, since we've gotten smart, and or send in a paper application. But we get these applications in, right? And then sometimes people make mistakes. We have to kick it back, and they're waiting, and they send it in, kick it back, send it in, kick it back. And it stopped the madness there. And we said, what are we doing wrong that's slowing people up? And we started this project called Apply Now, where we looked at every single uh, professional application. And we asked ourselves, are we asking the right questions? And found that perhaps we weren't. They're duplicative. Our processes, do they make sense? Some weren't. So we drilled down and realized that perhaps we can make things easier, more efficient for qualified people to get a license in a timely manner and have less errors. And we found that the volumes increase and the number of erroneous applications has decreased. That's government working on behalf of our people. And another thing, you know, I told you we have 1,600 employees in my department, good people. You know, one thing some folks forget. Sometimes folks complain about government, whether it's federal government, state government. I've been in both, federal government, now state government, right? And you say, it, it's bureaucratic. They have these crazy rules. But sometimes we forget the people who work for state government are Floridians too, all right? And they have to be motivated. They have to understand what the goals are and know they're important. And, you know, in the private sector, you may not get a raise, and some folks didn't get a raise until recently in the state government system, but you got to let them know that. We value you, but there's somewhere we're going as a team. And I've tried to do that as the leader. But knowing that I have these good people and, and giving them a vision, I realize sometimes we don't know everything. And maybe sometimes we seem like we do. Like, for instance, you know, I, you heard my, my resume that I bounced around, but I never ran a business, never ran a barbershop, never ran a bank, never ran, you know, a restaurant. So if I've never done these things, how can I set policies telling you what to do? So what we've done as a department, since we have a million licensees, we figured out we had 600,000 email addresses. And they're using technology, you know, um, SurveyMonkey, to be frank with you, we had some surveys my first year. And sent them out and just ask, hey, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How can we be helpful? And we sent out to our licensees, got some responses, but we incorporated that information into what we do all right, to be helpful as a state government and fulfill the governor's vision to ensure that Florida is successful. And in fulfilling the governor's vision, it's not just my department, but every single department under state government leadership. You know, the governor tasked the late agency heads to reduce regulations. And since he's been governor, he's reduced regulations by 2,800. You know, unnecessary rules that have been on the books through his, lead his leadership we have become more efficient and more business friendly because we got to be. We do not want to go backwards, we're going forwards. And if we don't go forward and ensure that you're successful, why do we exist as a government entity? We're wasting your time, wasting your tax dollars. You know, another thing we've done as a department to fulfill the governor's vision is to reach out and say we are partners again with the business community. You know, we had this situation where we, we regulate every restaurant, and we had some of our inspectors go into a restaurant looking like they're a paramilitary. Had cargo pants on, had badges around their necks, just invaded this restaurant during lunchtime while someone's eating a fish sandwich. And instead of staying one hour, we stayed four. And the owner said, my goodness, I know you need to inspect me. I know you heard this story, John, but it's true. You've got to inspect me, but do not prevent me from making money and serving customers and scaring them off. And since I've become secretary, following the governor's lead, created this thing called a Bill of Rights card, where when we go into inspect a restaurant, dressed like we're professionals as opposed to paramilitary, hand the restaurants a card to say, if you have a problem, contact this person. Here's his email address. This is how long the inspection should take. Again, communicating a sense that bottom line, we are in this thing together as a state 
government and business. Because if we aren't, if we aren't, our future is not bright. But it is bright because we have leaders like Governor Scott and licensees and businesses who care that we work together where there's one vision and also a passion to serve. But that passion is met with common sense, with also action, feedback, and engagement. So together we can forge a path that people can fulfill their dreams and make things happen in the state of Florida. But bottom line, that's my department. This is where we are, this is where we're going, to ensure that you, as licensees, business owners, know that we want to help. And it's not lip service, but it's muscle, brains combined. If you have any questions now, let's engage. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Astute observation. I, uh, I hold my real estate license. It's on referral status, and I, I'm through your department. Yes, ma'am. And for the last two years, the website has just been amazing. Thank it's, you. You navigate it easily. You get everything right away. You get your new license mailed right back to you. And now I know why. Awesome job. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, I'll just real quick on that. When I came in um, about uh, March of 2011, I realized our website was antiquated. It didn't. It was old. It was cumbersome. So I tasked you know our communications director to modify it. And we're constantly trying to make things better because. She said nice things, I'll just say bad things, all right? But you know, it's, for our department, it's not just we do it once. We continue to look at ourselves, try to improve, try to get better, because if we don't, we become stagnant. And one thing you may be interested in is that we have this online capability now where if you need a certification for your license, if you apply online, we'll send you for free, okay? John, you got anything? I, I agree with Robin. Um, we're being recorded, sir. You have to give the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> John Horn, Anna Maria Oyster Bar. I've had some issues with the health department where I've had, because I have three restaurants, so I'm three different inspectors. Yep. And they come in, they have different things. I called your office, or DBPR, and I said, I just need a clarification on And within three hours, I had three phone calls. Good. And so that's, I mean, your leadership has gone all the way down. They're as gung-ho as you are. And, that's directly reflection on you. Well, I appreciate that. And they solved my problem. Well, good. That's, that's, <laughs> the, bottom, that's the bottom line. You know Absolutely. what? We're here to solve problems. There's times where we don't get it right, and I have to own that. But, you know, we're working towards compliance with everybody who, who's under my purview. I got to take care of you. That's my job. I fill the potholes. That's what I do every day. So if there's a problem, I want to take care of it. Thank you, John. Thank you. Mr. Anything Secretary, else? Yes, uh, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you You're for having me. You're a delight, me. and uh, we, we appreciate you coming here. Uh, you mentioned some of your bosses, uh, not only the governor, but your, your response to, to the Florida legislature. Yes. Give us your crystal ball on what's going to happen in Tallahassee. Any new regulations going off the books or changes that you envision? Well, I'll tell you what's important. Thank you. This is what's important to my world, just to be frank with you. We're watching what's going to happen with gaming in the state of Florida. You know, both the House and Senate have two gaming um, committees. They hired a group called Spectrum to put together a study on gaming across the state of Florida. In my department, you know, I regulate um, paramutual facilities, you know, um, horses, dogs, high lie, slot machines, and also oversee the uh, compact with the Seminole Indians. You know, the compact will be up for renewal in 2015. So our leaders have a big task this coming session to determine where we go with gaming. So that's what we're watching this year from my department. Sir? Hello, thanks for speaking. My name is Rob Ferguson. I'm with the Holiday Inn and the Fairfield Inn and Suites Lakewood Ranch. Yes, sir. And I just wanted to ask what you think we need to change to effect effectively compete with other states as far as regulation. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, one thing we did for, um, restaurants, not hotels, but restaurants last session, is that we had a bill passed that allowed us to engage in, say, risk-based inspections for restaurants, right? We found that, you know, I only have, what, 138, you know, inspectors. We have about 48,000 restaurants, and we're conducting about 140,000 inspections a year, where the law before requires to inspect every restaurant twice a year as a minimum. And we got some really good actors who are great, have good compliance programs, and we got some bad ones. 
So just in terms of like using my resources wisely, um, we've got a bill passed that allows us to perhaps to establish basically a ranking system, and we're going through that process now, where if there's a restaurant that has a good program, good history, we go in once a year. If there's a bad actor, we're going in there hard and heavy. Because I will shut you down if I have to, but I don't want to do that. But if you're going to harm our people, we'll take you out. But that's what's important. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just being frank with you. I, 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 but, but, but my mantra, although I'm a, I'm, I'm a Marine, I'm a, I'm a Marine, I'm sorry, I am, I'm from Gainesville, I'm a Seminole, all right, I'm a federal prosecutor, but it's all, it's all about compliance. It's not about, you know, putting people in jail, it's not about taking their money and finding them, but if you're going to break the rules, you'll hold you responsible. So those are some thoughts, sir. And I'll tell you this, Carol Dover, Carol Dover is the uh, head of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. She's a fantastic <laughs> partner. You know, she was the very first person I met when I was a secretary, because just like I'm here in, in, in Manatee County, I go across the state, talk to citizens, but also our associations. It's important that there's a dialogue between the secretary and the associations. So that's it. Kevin Hennessy, I know you. <laughs> <clears throat> Kevin Hennessy, Lewis Longman and Walker, Bradenton, Florida. Yes, sir. Ken, um, first of all, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for your kind words, but I think anybody who's uh, listened to you today can tell that you're a person that's uh, always been self-motivated and, uh, and deserve uh, mm -hmm. all the success that you, you've gotten. And I'm, I congratulate you on your success. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, in terms of a question, what yes, I'd... Uh, oh, actually, the other thing I wanted to point out, you, you made a point of pointing out your roots, uh, UF to, uh, to Florida State, yes, sir. and the fact that I'm a, a hurricane. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I share your experience that, that I'm a hurricane that's now uh, paying for his second uh, seminal. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so go Knowles. All right. Um, <clears throat> my question, as you know, we uh, focus on environmental law in my firm. Right. And... Um, uh, one of the big issues that we always confront is the fact that uh, you've got all of these layers of government seemingly doing the same thing, right. you know, federal, state, local. Is there something that uh, the governor is doing in that regard to, to try to streamline uh, all of those multi-jurisdictional uh, regulations on the, uh, you know, of the same topic? Sure, I understand. I'll tell you, in my world here, you know, when you're a building contractor or you have some other profession, you may have to go not only to the state but also the locals, you know, and there's problems there in terms of like multiple layers. In turn, we're looking at what can we do in a given area to perhaps, if not streamline it, sure that it's a bit easier. Um, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, the governor definitely has talked about it. He's made some attempts, but for on our state level, we're doing our best we can. And we're trying to reach down to the locals. And that's all I'm going to say right now because I don't get shot. <laughs> all right. All righty. Any other questions? Sir, I'm eating up your time. I apologize. I apologize for talking so long. But for, first, let me say this. Thank you for having me. You all have been very gracious. This is a beautiful community. When I mentioned that I was a federal prosecutor or come down here at times, I came down here because I cared. That's just the bottom line. I'm here today because I care. It's not a show. Because, like, people who have these jobs, secretaries or commissioners or whatever, they're temporary jobs. But while you have them, you better have some passion, some brains about you, and do something. And when I talk about the governor, it's not just the panders say that. Just show you he cares. And as a team, we just want to make sure things get better. So thank you for your kindness, and y'all have a great day. Thank you, Ken. A great presentation. Uh, this is the last presentation like this that we're having this year, and we've got a, a, some good things planned for next year. So thank you all for coming, and uh, we are adjourned. Have a great afternoon.